Hello, Hello everybody, everybody and, and welcome, welcome back, back to back Steve's, Steve's World of Wonders. Wonders. In this exhibit area, discover what we know about how the Earth, our planet, works. Earth is a dynamic planet that is constantly changing. These changes are either driven by the sun or driven by primordial heat and radioactivity deep within the earth. Heat from the sun. We all live on the surface of the earth in the midst of ever-changing global weather systems primarily driven by heat from the sun. The sun's heating of the atmosphere and hydrosphere creates air currents and ocean currents which together create the earth's weather and climate. Weather and climate fundamentally affect everything on the surface of the earth. Heat from the earth much of what happens to the Earth's surface is caused by internal heat. Some accumulated during the planet's birth, but most from ongoing radioactive decay. It is so hot deep inside the Earth that over many millions of years, rocks can melt and flow in powerful convection currents. When, when these molten rocks reach the surface, they form volcanoes and trigger small earthquakes. Earth is a dy dynamic planet where physical change changes on a global scale are slow but constant so that the face of the Earth has changed dramatically over millions of years. Volcanoes Volcanoes occur when molten rock from deep inside the earth erupts explosively through its solid surface, dramatically demonstrating its enormous internal heat and forces. There are no volcanoes in Newfoundland and Labrador now, but there are rocks of volcanic origin, showing that the province was once located in an active volcanic zone. Pillow basalts. Pillow basalts form when lava at 1200 degrees Celsius is erupted underwater and cools rapidly forming pillow shaped lobes. The outside of the pillows cool so quickly that the lava forms a glassy skin. Vesicular basalt. Basalt is the dark fine grained volcanic rock formed when an iron magnesium rich lava cools. Vesicular basalt is formed when dissolved gases escape from cooling lava and leave behind small holes called ves vesicles. columnar rhyolite. As a lava flow cools and solidifies, it contracts. Sometimes the contraction produces forces that cause fractures of joints to open up, which form six-sided columns. Extrusive igneous rocks. All of these samples are extrusive rocks. They are usually fine grained with tiny crystals. Vesicular basalt. Vesicular basalt is an extrusive rock. Erupted at the Earth's surface, it contains many small holes called vesicles, which are formed as gas escaped from the lava. Gabbro is the 
intrusive equivalent of basalt. Am ag amygdaloidal basalt. Amygdaloidal. Amygdaloidal basalt. Amygdaloidal basalt is a volcanic rock formed when gas escaping from cooling lava leaves cavities which are later filled by other minerals. The mineral filled holes are called amygdules. Amygdules. Rhyolite. Rhyolite is a light colored extrusive rock erupted at the surface of the earth. The banding was created as layers of different minerals were stretched out in the slow moving lava. Granite is the intrusive equivalent of rhyolite. Mistaken point fossil cast. We have over 150 individual fossils on our cast. How many can you find? Could have fooled me. I would have never found them myself. Devil's Cleft Signal Hill. This arch is a replica of a large fissure known locally as Devil's Cleft, found in the sedimentary rocks of Signal Hill on the north side of the entrance to St. John's Harbor. This feature is the result of erosion of a soft layer in the tilted beds of sandstone and conglomerate making up the rock formations. The shape of the land is influenced by the underlying bedrock. The rock formations forming Signal Hill, South Side, South Side Hills, and Cape Spear are resistant to erosion, resulting in these highlands. The harbor and the city of St. John sit in a deep valley carved by glaciers into the softer shale and sandstone. There's Signal Hill. You can see Cabot Tower right there. And there's the Devil's Cleft Arch at the bottom.
arrows here. This goes over this way. And over here. Glaciers. Huge masses of ice called glaciers have left their mark on the land, shaping and polishing the exposed bedrock. Melting glaciers deposit a mixture of clay to boulder-sized material as landforms and leave large boulders called glacial erratics perched on the surface. Pebbles and cobbles lodged in the bottom of a glacier leave scratches and grooves in the bedrock. The scratches are called glacial striations and indicate the direction of ice movement. Make your own glacial striations. The province of Newfoundland, a summary. The province of Newfoundland and Labrador is truly a spectacular geological showcase where the effects of the enormous forces that have shaped our planet over the eons can clearly be seen in its rocks. People migrated into Newfoundland and Labrador as the ice retreated. Who? When? How did we develop our relationship with this land and its resources? In the next exhibit, our people, we trace the progress of humans out of Africa and around the globe and explore the history of our life and development in this province of Newfoundland. In this exhibit area, discover how the land we live on and the sea surrounding us have always provided the natural resources upon which life depends. The availability of these natural resources has shaped and continues to shape the daily lives of our people. Here's an Anukshuk. After the last continental ice sheets melted away around 10,000 years ago, plants and animals came back to Newfoundland and Labrador. Humans followed different people at different times. Discover where we came from, how we got here, how we are part of the story of the evolution of life on Earth and how, since the beginning, our relationships with each other and with the land and sea around us have changed. Egyptopithecus zeusis. Egyptopithecus zeusis. 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 Was an early primate dating to 33 million years ago. Found in Africa, Egyptopithecus zeusis exhibited characteristics of primitive primates and more modern monkeys and apes. This primate was the size of a modern day house cat. Australopithecus afarensis lived in Africa from 3.8 to 2.9 million years ago and was a bipedal hominid with a brain roughly the size of a chimpanzee's. This particular replica skull is thought to be male as the male members of this species were almost double the size of the females. Homo habilis Homo habilis lived in Africa 
approximately 2 million years ago and was an early member of the genus Homo. As this species was the first maker and user of stone tools, Homo habilis literally means handyman. Homo erectus lived in Africa from 1.9 million years ago to as recently as 20,000 years ago and was the first of our ancestors to leave Africa and spread to Asia and Europe. This was the first member of the species Homo to harness the use of fire. Homo sapiens Homo sapiens is a young species having evolved in Africa less than 200,000 years ago. Homo sapiens has a large brain and a much lighter build than earlier hominids. This species was the first to develop projectile weapons and a sense of spiritual self and the only species of hominids to circumnavigate Earth. For thousands of years, humans have left their mark on the world around them. Painting on cave walls was one way for early people to record a good hunt or memorable encounter. Rub your hands together quickly to warm them up. Then press one of your hands into the cutout wall for 10 to 15 seconds. Leave your mark like those who have gone before. Oh, some tools. Wow, it's a lamp where they housed seal fat source of light and heat. Labrador. That's a 2,000 year old lamp. An Inuit knife made from slate. Cool. Some kind of settlement here. Pop up tent. One of the first people to do geological survey work was William Cornett, who traveled across Newfoundland in 1824. What's this up here? Tube full of junk. Waste disposal. Throughout the world, most solid waste is disposed of by burial in the earth and little by recycling. Burial of refuse has a direct impact on groundwater in the disposal area and can often affect it for decades. Great care must be taken with waste disposal even in sparsely populated areas like Newfoundland and Labrador. Our people, a summary. Our people, a summary. After billions of years of Earth history and the eventual emergence of humans, our development, population and resource requirements 
have accelerated rapidly. Now we are poised at a time when humankind, unlike any other species ever, can control and change the world in ways unimaginable a short while ago. How are we equipped to deal with our future? Find out in the next exhibit area. Research vessel. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield at work during one of two days of extravehicular activity EVA to install Canadarm2 on the International Space Station 2001. Canadian astronaut Chris Hatfield at work. Here's a model of a huge contribution to space. Engineering model, Amarsat 4 antenna array. As part of the development team, EMS Space and Technology, now MDA, was responsible for the design, manufacture, and testing of the antenna feed array for the Amarsat 4 satellite program. The Amarsat 4 antennas have been designed to support high speed communications. For companies across North and South America, Europe, Africa, and Asia through the IMARSAT Broadband Global Area Network BGAN program. McDonald, Detweiler, and Associates Limited Satellite Systems, located in Saint Anne de Bellevue, Quebec, supplied the 120 helix antenna feed elements for the 2.5 meter antenna array. This structure enables the Amersat 4 satellite to generate complex spot beam patterns using the spacecraft's reflector to optimize bandwidth and channels and to provide a varied and high quality broadband services. Here's the Canadarm. Pretty cool. Here's some models of Mars rovers. Okay. What's this? Space drums. Processing module of the space drums. Space dynamically responding ultrasonic matrix system or space drums was created by Guigni 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 
International Limited, located in Paradise, Newfoundland. They are one of only a few commercial companies permitted physical space on the International Space Station. The goal of Space Drums is to provide a suite of hardware capable of facilitating containerless advanced materials, including combustion, synthesis, and fluid physics. That is, inside Space Drums, samples of experimental materials can be processed without ever touching a container wall. This module is the prototype of the second generation space drums. Space, space drums. drums. Two, 2008. ARIS-5 Rocket Constellation Program ARIS-5 is a cargo carrier designed for use on missions to the Moon and to Mars. In 2012, ARIS-5 was incorporated into NASA's US SLS Base Launch System. The SLS, shown at right, is a multi-purpose crew and cargo vehicle for human exploration to the Moon and beyond. The ARIS-5 represents NASA's planned launch rocket for the next two decades marking the beginning of an exciting new era in space exploration. Our Future in Space Summary Space remains a vast and largely unknown realm. It will be many years before humankind can move further beyond our planet. So we must strive to protect our fragile world. Technologies developed for the exploration of space may help us in that endeavor by providing new ways to harvest and use resources in environmentally sound ways a new means to discover resources at home and in space. As a people, we must find a way to balance our needs with the needs of future generations. As you reflect upon the part you will play in making our future a bright one, take a moment to look around and consider was it, what is important about this special place. The Earth has existed for billions of years treasure and protect this world and our home will always be the blue planet. Signal Hills rocks ex existed 30, 300 million years before the first dinosaurs. Wow. existed before the Atlantic Ocean. Welcome to the Great Rock Wall. Quiet, as always, the Great Rock Wall is observing its 550 millionth year birthday. Its story began when ancient rivers deposited layers of sand and silt on an, on an offshore river delta. Over a long period of time, the layers hardened into a bed of sandstone and siltstone. Later on, dynamic forces from within the earth tilted and uplifted these beds, and they became part of the enormous Appalachian mountain range. Over hundreds of millions of years, the mountains were worn down by raging rivers, seas, fierce winds, rain, snow, and even glaciers to become the hills you see today. 
the Great Rock Wall and the Johnson Geo Center is pleased that you visit right here at the very center of Signal Hill, our natural heritage. There's the neck shook again. Pretty great exhibit all around, I'd say. And I'm going to the exit. Luma Spirit. This Inuit carving by Harry Semigag is meant to portray the whale's spirit within the man, as revealed by the whale fin on the back of the carving. This carving was carved using a piece of nickel ore, which formed the ovoid from the Voisis Bay deposit, Labrador. The ovoid is composed of massive sulfide formed deep within the Earth's surface. After more than one billion years of erosion, the ovoid is exposed at its present location. This carving contains the minerals pentlandite, nickel ore, chalcopyrite, chalcopyrite, copper ore, pyrite, a source of iron and sulfur, and magnetite. Sample of the month, fluorite. Fluorite, also called fluorspar, is the mineral form of calcium fluoride. Fluorite is a widely occurring mineral that occurs globally with significant deposits in over 9,000 areas. One of the largest deposits of fluorite in North America is located in the Buren Peninsula, Newfoundland, Canada. It may occur as a vein deposit especially with metallic minerals, where it often forms a part of the Gangui, the surrounding host rock in which valuable minerals occur and may be associated with Galena, Sphalerite, Barite, Quartz, and Calcite. It is a common mineral in deposits of hydrothermal origin and has been noted as a primary mineral in granites and other igneous rocks and as a common minor consultant constituent of dolostone and limestone. Not a consultant, a constituent. Gibbet Hill. In the 1700s, Gibbet Hill was the site of a wooden scaffold where the bodies of executed criminals were hung on display. Later, Wallace's battery was built on the hill to cover Signal Hill Road in case of enemy attack. This is the shortest of the Signal Hill trails, and after visiting the summit, hikers returned by the same route. From the summit of the hill where the gibbet once stood, there are excellent panoramic views of St. John's Harbor, Quiddy Vidi Lake, and Signal Hill. I'm here at the Newfoundland 
Chocolate Cafe. Having a pork loin sandwich, some ice water. And I've got the same mural up that I saw downtown before. And there's some uh, museum exhibits in here. I came from that direction. I'm gonna try out this sandwich. Really good. It's got melted Havarti cheese on it. Grilled in a crack. Delicious.